TDR Network presents Inspire 2015 We are obliged to seek knowledge of Islam first and foremost. Of course, the command of the Prophet ﷺ didn't distinguish between knowledge of Islam and worldly knowledge. He just said, seeking knowledge is obligatory on every Muslim. And I'm sure you've heard before the distinction made between the knowledge of Islam and worldly knowledge. Knowledge of Islam is considered to be fardain, which begins with knowledge of Allah. Whereas knowledge of the worldly affairs is fard kifaya, communal obligatory knowledge. If some people learn it, the society is not held accountable. If nobody learns it, then the whole society is in sin. That knowledge, the knowledge of this world, the worldly knowledge, is divided into two types of knowledge. The knowledge of the deen, we know. We said that's individual obligatory knowledge, fardain beginning with knowledge of Allah, knowledge of the messenger of Allah, knowledge of Islam, and so on and so forth. But the worldly knowledge which concerns us, what of that knowledge? Well, we have to distinguish in that knowledge between what is true knowledge and what is false. We are obliged to seek, seek it, but only the true knowledge from amongst it. Meaning, for example, knowledge of how to prevent death. Where the West spends millions of dollars in an attempt to learn how to stop the biological clock. Everybody has a biological clock that's ticking away. And the time comes when that clock stops and we die. So they want to stop the clock, period. Not that you died, but that you can live forever. So you have people researching how we can live forever. That is false knowledge. As a Muslim, we do not enter into that field. We don't research. We don't spend time, energy, money into such research. Because it's false. Knowledge of evolution. How we evolved from, supposedly, the apes, monkeys, that's false knowledge. We don't research into those areas. We are human beings. We have always been human beings. Then we take the body of knowledge, which is true knowledge, and we have to further subdivide it between useless knowledge and useful knowledge. Again, as Muslims, we have to make this, 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 this distinction. Because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to seek refuge from useless knowledge. He used to make the dua often, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge which is of no benefit. Knowledge which is of no benefit. Like what? <clears throat> like sending rocket ships to Mars to 
to find out the composition of Earth on Mars. It's true knowledge. But it's useless. For us to spend, the U.S., for example, spending billions of dollars to send those rocket ships to Mars, the Mars rovers and experiments done on the soil of Mars, trying to see if there's life. They want to find life elsewhere in the universe to justify their claim that we are not unique. We are an accident, and that accident has repeated itself elsewhere. Proof. But they can't find life anywhere else. So, they spend the billions going to Mars. At the same time, in America, there were, according to statistics back in the early 90s, more than 4 million Americans who were homeless. 4 million Americans who were homeless. Had no homes. Living in the streets. Sleeping under the bridges. Of course, the picture we have of America is, you know, the big skyscrapers, modern technology, etc., it's hard to believe there are actually people who sleep in the streets, live in the streets. They have no home, no place to go. That may be Calcutta in India. Yes, yes, we know about that. Calcutta. New York City, Washington, Chicago, Los Angeles. Yeah. In Los Angeles, where the winter doesn't get so cold, No problem. But in New York City, in Chicago, where the winter gets 20 degrees below zero, 15 degrees below zero, hey, every year there are hundreds, thousands who die frozen. They're homeless. So, can we justify sending rocket ships to Mars to find out the composition of the Earth on Mars while leaving millions of our citizens without homes? No. No. We said that knowledge about dirt on Mars is useless knowledge. So we, as Muslim scientists, etc., would only research in the useful knowledge. How we can provide homes for our citizens, food for them, etc. So we have a different focus. We are looking at knowledge for the benefit of knowledge. Not knowledge for the sake of knowledge, that is Western secular philosophy of knowledge knowledge for the sake of knowledge no if it's useless knowledge if it's false knowledge no knowledge for its benefit that's why the prophet sallam said khairun nas and fa'uhum lin nas the best of people are those most beneficial to the mass most beneficial to people Useful knowledge. Then, <clears throat> in the category of useful knowledge, we have to divide it into appropriate knowledge and inappropriate knowledge. You might say, well, what's that? Appropriate knowledge and inappropriate knowledge. Well, inappropriate knowledge, for example... When I give this talk to students in medicine, universities, medical universities, I tell them, I ask, 
what fields people are studying in, then whenever a brother puts his hand up and says, I'm studying gynecology, I said, that's inappropriate. As a male for you, to specialize in gynecology is not appropriate. Another brother puts his hand up. I'm specializing in breast cancer. No, this is not appropriate. It's useful knowledge. It's true. But not appropriate for males to specialize in. You have knowledge of it as a doctor. You have knowledge of it. So in emergency circumstances, you can apply it. But that is not your specialization. A sister puts her hands up and she says, she's specializing in prostate cancer. I said, no, that's not appropriate. You understand this point? I think it's pretty clear. We have appropriate knowledge and inappropriate knowledge. Donate now. Go to thedailyreminder.org slash donate.